Hello and welcome, I'm Vincent McCurry. We begin in West Africa, where Ivory Coast's military tribunal has delivered the first verdict related to last year's post-election conflict. The tribunal found five men, five men guilty on Thursday in the kidnapping and murder of a colonel during the peak of the violence in March 2011. Kadi Fofana, communications chief for the tribunal, says that General Bruno Dogbo Ble, the chief of uh, ex president Logan Bagbo's Republican Guard received a 15-year sentence for other men. Four other men received sentences of 5 to 15 years. For more discussion and reaction, we go via Skype to VOA's Anne Luke in Abidjan. Hello, Anne. Hi, Vincent. Yes, now we know that you did actually sit through some of these uh, proceedings. Uh, give us a sense of how uh, things were, what happened, and who else was on trial. Um, a lot of the testimony that I witnessed really hinged on the idea of command responsibility. You know, the soldier who actually confessed to pulling the trigger and actually killing the victim, Colonel Adamadoso, said he did so under Dogbobley's Dog orders, something Dogbobley vehemently denied throughout the entire trial. It was a rather passionate trial with lots of exchanges between not only the lawyers, but also the witnesses themselves kind of going back and forth on versions of events. Um, Dogbobley was obviously the most... The the highest profile defendant. Um, this was the first trial, but this was definitely not his last appearance um, before a civil or military tribunal. Um, as you said, he was the head of Laurent Bagbo's um, elite Republican Guard, which was really at the heart of Laurent Bagbo's efforts to yeah. hold on to power by force following that November 2010 election. And Dobobble has been implicated implicated in, in a wide range of abuses, um, forced disappearances of political opponents, the killing of, uh, the targeting and killing of West African immigrants. Um, so this is definitely the la not the last we'll see of him. Yes. And uh, now, uh, you know, many will f say that, well, this is good. There's some progress. Uh, there's, uh, it looks like the wheels of justice are probably beginning to turn in that country, but others are saying, well, this is possibly the so-called uh, victor justice, a kind of a vindictiveness. Why is that so? Well, armed forces loyal to both sides of the conflict loyal to both um, former President Bagbo and current President Alassane Ouattara are recognized to have committed war crimes and pretty serious human rights violations during that six-month conflict. However, while dozens of military officers and political leaders from Bagbo's side have been arrested and charged, and Bagbo himself is awaiting trial at The Hague, no one from President Ouattara's side has been charged. And in fact, some, um, some key rebel commanders um, who were part of the offensive that brought Watcher to power and are suspected of abuses have been promoted to key posts within the military and civilian leadership. So I think there's a real concern that while the start of this trial is a step forward, the, the continuation of this current trend of what many are calling a one-sided justice is really dangerous not just in terms of reconciliation and accountability, but also in terms of the very real security challenges that, that remain. Yeah, and actually talking about that, we know that this country had been divided in this conflict between North and South for uh, the very longest time. So what uh, are some of the risks that this trial may pose while it might be perceived as uh, justice taking its course, but realistically on the ground, what are some of the risks? It's not even just this trial, it's kind of this general sense of, of impunity for those who have so far escaped justice for, for actions, you know, during this conflict and previous conflicts going back to 2002. And then this sense of marginalization and unfair treatment among those in the bank and the Bagbo camp. Um, we've seen this not just in continued violence in the West um, since the start of the year, but also in this recent wave of attacks on military and police installations in Abidjan and around the country. Um, you know, on the one hand, there's the theory that these are these are pro bagbos perhaps even being masterminded by, you know, exiled political and military leaders uh, in neighboring Ghana who, who are trying to destabilize the Watcher regime. And on the other hand, there are theories that perhaps these are these are discontented former rebel fighters or people from Watcher side who are unhappy about the current state of affairs or unhappy about not being properly integrated into the national army. So it, just in general, this atmosphere of impunity, um, and, and lack of rule of law is really is really damaging and really breeding quite a bit of mistrust and it's obviously not at all conducive mm -hmm. to, to resolving some of the deeper divisions. In, in, in very few seconds, how can you describe the state of the country 
security-wise right now? You know, the security is it's greatly improved, greatly improved. But that's but when you talk to people, this the, these random sporadic attacks have, have created a little bit of, um, um, what would you call it, kind of a, a nervousness, a psychosis, a, a sense that perhaps it's not quite over. You know, it's it's hard to move toward peace and reconciliation when there's still little little pockets of violence and little spurts of instability. All right. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, that update. That's VOA's West Africa correspondent uh, and look um, joining us via Skype from Abidjan.